Sometimes <laughs> it's terrible to be right. <laughs> but we'll get to that later. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Under Construction. Hey, y'all. To my left, Ronnie Richie Rich Richardson. <laughs> hey, y'all. Vince, the beardless one. What's up, y'all? What's up? Give me a couple months, the beard will be back. It'll be right back, <laughs> right before Christmas. I'm hosting today, Mr. Kaiser Solse, our brother Jamal. Happy 40th birthday. Hey, 40th. He Modest is. Boy. Yeah, yeah. Is it, he's 39. He's 39. He's 39. Oh, snap. Oh, I thought he was in the club. All right. Well, never mind. All right. Hey, no, 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 no. For, for, for production's sake. He's 40. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll go with 40. He's still still hungover because he was turned up last night, especially after that amazing NBA game that broke out in the last five minutes of the Hornets (laughs) versus Knicks and how it ended. Mm. So, uh, how was y'all's week? It was pretty good, man. I went down to Columbia last night, had an awesome time with friends, uh, seafood broil. Playing games, it was awesome. I feel it. Yeah, pretty much the same to me. Um, I don't even remember why I took last week off from recording, but um, it was it was it was good. I was supposed to have a kickball tournament yesterday, and I gotta admit, I wasn't looking forward to playing into it. I, I don't know why, but my, I, I wasn't hyped. And then we got the email saying it got canceled due to weather. <laughs> so you know, I responded and said like, "Man, I'm sorry to hear that, but." You know, I definitely have my little Kobe going on right yeah, now. Yeah, you just exposed yourself to the world, right? And, but the thing is, here's the funny part, though. You know, the team I was supposed to play with, we had a little group chat, you know, where everybody uh-huh. could talk, keep up with each other. When they got canceled, everybody was saying the same thing. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> was saying the same thing. So, um, it was, now, I will put this out there, the, it was it was for a charity. Oh, and okay. um, it was only $10 per person. So because it got canceled, she refunded all of my money. Mm-hmm. But the majority of the team told her to keep the money because okay. it was it was for charity anyway. Okay. So she still got she still got the money. Good okay, stuff, good stuff. What about yours, man? How was your week? Well, it was going very well. See, we we beat the uh, <laughs> the Hornets beat the. Uh, <laughs> Mix last night. Yeah, man, who, who did Mom beat with the buzzer beater? I'm, uh, who was it? It was well, the, let's say Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. That's right, we yeah, beat yeah, the yeah, Pistons. Yeah, That's yeah, right, yeah, the yeah. Blake Griffin memes are great. Yeah. Uh, he's still then, standing there right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he's still, still to this day, still he's, he's still, still standing. There. Legend has it. He, he'll join the team tomorrow. <laughs> and then, uh, the Hurricanes won a, a okay. really, really close game. And then the Hornets won again against the Knicks. And then the Panthers play, but we'll get to that. Uh, let's go talk back about the Hornets this week. This week they went two and one uh, to improve their record to six and seven for the season. And anybody out there who says they had the Hornets going six and seven after thirteen games is a liar. You are lying. So, you, do, do you remember earlier, uh, like like toward the end of summer? Everybody's like, by, by the end of November, who's going to win more games? The Hornets or the Panthers? <laughs> <laughs> I think we know the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's shocking. It's shocking. <laughs> Absolutely. So we actually have a lot to talk about with the Hornets, and we're going to lead off with them this week because we feel like they deserve it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so I'm going to let Vince start off, start off here with his thoughts since he was missing last week. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm going to say. Um, I predicted – that this team may or may not win too many games this year, but they will be fun to watch. Mm-hmm. They will be awesome to watch. Three pointers, uh, dunks, pass, you know, ball movement, all that. And uh, for the last couple of months, I've compared them to the Baron Davis uh, Golden State Warriors mm-hmm. or or the uh, Darius Miles LA Clippers. I've compared this team going into the season to both of those teams. Well, we might not win too much, but they will be fun to look at. But I did not expect this. I cannot legitimately mm. say that after 13 games, I expected them to be six and seven, looking pretty good going forward. And and it's only 13 games, but people are actually talking about a six, seven, or eight seed going into the playoffs. And I won't be mad at it. I've held true that I couldn't call the playoff appearance. Mm-hmm. You know, 35 wins maybe. But I couldn't call a play, and I'm still not hopping on that bandwagon mm-hmm. right now. But hey, JB got my respect for right now, yeah. man. He, he's he's really he's really turning heads, and um, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. Last week, I was on the podcast saying that Monk needed to start, and I said that the, that he's actually turning the corner. He didn't start, but he's turning that corner. He's turning the corner, he and, definitely and, is. And, and, I'm a well-documented monk hater. <laughs> I started the fan club. Uh, 
if he keeps going, I might have to give him an apology, a sincere apology. And 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 I'm actually happy that JB has kind of given him that confidence and just kind of letting him play through the mistake. He still sucks at defense. Yeah. But those 20 pounds he gained over the summer helped him. Especially, I love when he's attacking the rim instead yes. of settling for that jump shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's he, he's grown leaps and bounds, and, and I can honestly say we can see the development of each player. Even though Miles played like crap last yeah, night, last couple, of which months. caused well, which caused Batum to play yesterday. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Miles has been a, has been a revelation in itself, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I'm really surprised, and I'm happy for JD. Now, with, with with Malik Monk, do you think do you think this is a situation of the, the 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 system that he's not playing in, or do you think that the game has just finally slowed down and he's now able to seize the game and can actually play the game now? I think it's a combination of a system, the coach entrusting him to play the game, and the game has also slowed down for him. It's, it's year three. It's it's do or die at this point for him. Um, and him bulking up the game 20 pounds also helped a lot. Because last year, all these driving layups he's making, he's yeah. flopping and getting thrown into the first yeah, row. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm just very glad. I'm, I'm very happy that he's he, he, he's, he, he took the summer seriously. We all had questions when he didn't join the team in Vegas. But it, it's, it's, obviously, it's, it's obvious that he's put in the work. And, and to me, he's probably one of my best creators on, on the offensive end as well. Uh, I don't. I still have issues with him leaving, leaving his feet to pass the ball. But he's... He he's way better and, and he play he's playing the game more controlled this yeah. year. I think we're seeing uh, the effect of JB holding true to what he said when he first came to Charlotte. We're gonna focus on player development. Yeah, I've always felt that Monk's biggest issue is that he couldn't get out of his own head. Uh, Malik Monk is is a, his athleticism is his greatest asset. Yeah, he's not a great shooter. He was a pretty good shooter in Kentucky, but. When, I think when guys get on the NBA court and they see that longer three-point line, it's intimidating. He mm -hmm. struggled shooting three his first two seasons. So this year, he's like, you know what? I'm going to bulk up. I'm going to take it to the rim. I'm going to attack the rim. I'm going to use my athleticism. And that's something that JB has allowed him to do. When he was playing under Clifford, you know, unfortunately, his hand was forced. He had to play that backup one guard, which he it's wasn't good at. Yeah. Um, and then when he went to playing the backup two, he still had some of that, well, do I need to be a backup exactly. one or exactly. do I need yeah, to yeah. be two? Now his role is more defined. Yeah. JB's like, hey, I need to go out there. I need to score points. Hey, I need, I'm going to put the ball in your hands for the last shot of the game because you got the quickest release on the team. That's a huge boost in confidence yeah. for, your, for your coach to come out and be like, oh, well, I knew Malik Monk was going to get the shot off. That's huge. And I think uh, – that's probably the biggest reason. And, and, seen. and another stat: he's shooting almost fifty percent for the yeah. season from the floor. That's, that's, for a guard, that's incredible. Yeah, it's forty-eight percent, man. Get him back to the buzzer beater from uh, from Friday night. If you guys went at uh, JB's uh, press conference and they asked him about the Malik Monk shot, he, yeah, he actually said that. Well, I knew it was going to go to Malik because out of everybody on the team, he has the quickest release. Mm -hmm. And I just think with, with everything that Malik Monk has been through, because let's, let's keep it real, going back to last season, ever since he did that interview where he took a shot at the veterans, he, yeah, everything he just literally went downhill. And I don't know if he has that perspective still that he's playing with, and I don't know if he's matured as a result of that, but to see any coach or anybody publicly mm -hmm. praising Malik Monk and then for him to be playing the way he's been playing the last the last week or so, we're going to have legitimate conversations as far as should he actually be starting. That's a good point about the veterans because the veterans this year are actually being veterans. veterans. Yeah. They're coming off the bench doing yeah. veteran things. I know we everyone Play, hates Nick role. Batum, but sorry to say, Nick Batum was part of the reason we were in position to even win that game yesterday. Yeah. He came yeah. in, he played good defense, he did some very savvy Stuff you know, uh, the Knicks have a lot of young players as well, and Nick Batum was able to take advantage of that. Marvin comes off the bench these last few games and hit some big shots. Hit some big, big, big yeah, yeah, shots. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know, we'll we'll get back to that. I don't know if I still want to use them as trade bait because they they they're, they're already ingratiated into the system. They know the players. They they have clout, so to speak, and they have both accepted their roles yeah. coming off the bench. So Marvin Marvin actually 
had a bad game on Friday night. And I was pretty frustrated with Marvin. But in the fourth quarter, when we made that run, he hit two big times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He had two big threes. So why would you in my in my mind, why would you want to mess something up that isn't broke? Because you don't want you don't want it to go well, you want to take it. You want that number one man. You want more ping pong balls. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're not, and, oh, and, and speaking of another stat that I saw after last night's game, um, we were tied with the Denver Nuggets mm -hmm. with the most wins on the season in which we trailed by double digits at any point. And when la and, and I don't know if this is a good stat or not. Yeah, but I actually, after I last night's win. Actually, I think it's a great stat because – if you clean up the things that are getting you down in double digits, then win by double digits. Right? Exactly. You you're, you're, yeah, the fact that they're able, uh, the resiliency is one of the biggest unsung traits of any NBA team. A lot of teams will get down, especially a team like the Hornets, who everyone predicts that they're going to be terrible. And you know they they hear the narrative, they hear the media, so they get down by fourteen. And a lot of teams would think. Psh, you know, we're just terrible. We're not supposed to win this game. But they play hard every time. They're even in the, the games that they got blown out in. Mm -hmm. They're playing hard to the clock reads triple zero. And that's something you – I don't know if that's JB or that's just the mentality these guys have or it's the vets. But that's that's an amazing thing to have. And that's why they're able to win. They were able to win these last two games. They're probably young enough not, to even, not even to know better at this point. Yeah, and, now, absolutely, yeah. With the way that they've been able to come back, uh, because every single game they have played this year, win or lose, they have been down by 10-plus points yeah. at some point during the game. And we've won six of those games. What is it about this team, this very inexperienced team, to where they're able to get these wins where in the past this doesn't happen? Well, close games in the past, we knew who the ball was going to. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This offense is whoever's open gets the shot. Yep. Who's ever hot gets the shot. Kimba could have been two for twenty, but we know he's getting the ball. He's been mm -hmm. giving the ball over for I mean, it, that's it's, it's it's not right or wrong. He's he's the leader. He's a star. He's he's he, he was he was the uh, All NBA player. What, you, you, Who you else gonna shoot the ball? That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> but it's so unpredictable now, and 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 and, and everybody's sharing the rock, and teams don't know who to, who to tee off on. It's just like okay, we got a man up. Who's who's who? And, and it, it's the element of surprise, and, and, and I love it. And to add to your point, going back to the game last night versus New York, uh, one, I want to talk about how uh, JB trusted Nick to to inbound the ball. But we'll, <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk about I, I think I'll be able to get that in later. But mm -hmm. on that last inbound play, I think, I think Rozier was the number one option on that play because he flared to the corner three. And Nick at least looked like he wanted to pass the ball to Rozier, but he wasn't open. Mm -hmm. And he, in my opinion, he looked to pin it for like one or two seconds, and then it, it ended up becoming a hot potato, and he just had to get the ball in. And he throws it in to PJ, and I think the way that the play was drawn up, PJ is like, if I get the ball, I have to look for Devontae Graham. And even though Devontae Graham got the ball, mm -hmm. He he was being guarded. He yeah, had to make heavily, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had to make a juke move to get open and get the ball. And it's just I'm, I'm these last two games, these last two buzzer beaters. I'm just like, what's the difference with this team that they're able to do this? Whereas in I think the, it's, and I know I know Kim will play the big part in it. I mean, I hate to just be all in on JB, but that's the difference. Yeah, these players have confidence that they didn't have. Last season, they, yeah. I mean, if you look at the Pistons game, the Hornets shot terribly from three point range, yeah. and then lo and behold, that's what ends up winning us <laughs> the game. On really, it wasn't even really a good shot. I mean, it was the only shot the Hornets could take. Monk had to get that shot up, but I mean, he was two guys draped all over him. He's almost thirty feet away from the basket, and it's just bottom, you yeah. know. But he had confidence that. It was. I, I bet when he shot that, he knew it was going in. And that's the difference, I think, last season. Everyone acquiesced to Kimba, like Rodney said. And because of that, though, no one really had confidence yeah. that, hey, I, maybe I can be the one to, to win the game for us. And it's not just making the shots, but we've seen uh, Cody Martin have such a big oh, yeah. impact on yeah, coming yeah, yeah, in. Yeah. Or little things like 
JV switching to a 2-3 zone mm. in the third quarter. That was huge. I was yeah. asking, and I saw your comment on the game. Three, right. That was that was a very boss move. I was actually upset when you did <laughs> because like because like I, I was looking at it more from a macro point of view, and I'm like, wait, we're really playing zone. Well, the NBA, NBA, we're, NBA. we're really playing zone yeah. right now. And, but and, it worked. It worked. We, we remember uh, against Brooklyn last year, they went into a box and one yeah, and yeah, completely yeah. shut us down with Kemba. A couple teams did so, that. So I, I think sometimes NBA coaches outsmart themselves and they think two, two three zone. Come on, really? I'm not gonna do that. JB is like, you know what? I'm better if we run because the Knicks, uh, as Jamal said, they have 14 power forwards on yeah, the yeah, roster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, JB is like, you know, I'm gonna run a two three and make them shoot, and it worked. You know, until mm-hmm. eventually the Knicks were able to, to to find a way around it. But by then the game's tied back up. We come from all the way from eight down at the half. And now we got a chance to win. Game, yeah. um, and, and the Hornets had enough discipline to follow that game plan. The coach said, hey, we're going to run a 2-3 zone. And these guys are like, all right, let's do it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah some so, big ups. Big ups. I, I'll give credit what credit to do, some big ups. So also, so, you know, Dwayne Bacon uh, is out with the injury. Mm-hmm. And in his stead, Devontae Graham has moved into the starting position as a two-guard um, with Rozier really as the one. But they both yeah, playing kind of a combo guard. And there hasn't really been a fall off in his overall production. So do you guys think that Graham should stay installed as a starter? Should we try Malik Monk as a starter? Should Bacon get that starting role back when he comes back? Um, how do we feel about that? Um, honestly, I give Bacon one more shot. Uh, we don't know if the injury has been affecting the shooting percentages or not. Let him get healthy. And put him on a short leash, and then at the at that point, try Monk. Uh, but I'm also concerned Monk starting. I, I like Monk better against second units, and I, I like him in, in that microwave role, the Vinny Johnson type role, coming right. off the bench, heat up, you see if he's working. If he's not, go sit down, go sit down, Malik. But uh, I like what JB has been doing with 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 Rozier and Graham. Rosier plays so much better with Graham on the floor. Mm-hmm. It, it allows him to get off the ball. It's, it's like he's a small two guard, which kind of concerns me, but leave that one alone. But uh, and, and I like that. I like that he's been staggering their minutes, and so one of them is always on the floor at all times. I, I love it. JB is well, just a survivor. Well, that. first off, I, I want to point out that uh, Bacon was actually available to play last night That's right, versus well, the Knicks. Right, yeah. He was available to play. Yeah, he he was he, he was, was at, available. He was listed out. He was, he was, he he was up. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a DNP CD. Ooh. Yeah, but I think that was because like of the type of injury because it's a knee. So um, I think uh, when I looked at the uh, the pregame, I think JB said, "Hey, we're just going to go with it for the game." Now he said before the game, he said Nick will play. And even mm. though Nick had a good game last night, I think Nick got something on the org. Okay, we'll talk about that. <laughs> I, I, I think Nick got a dirty secret, and he's like, hey. I, I know what I know. you did last summer, Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but, uh, no, Bacon Bacon was a DNP, uh, CD, and I think it's because it's a knee. It, it, it's a knee yeah. issue, so, like, maybe he just doesn't want to bring him back too, too soon. With that being said, this is a good problem for JB to have. But I'm going to go against the grain here. And when Dwayne Bacon is ready to come back and start, I think he should come off the bench with with Devontae Graham while Malik Monk starts. Because mm. from what because Bacon plays best with Graham. Devontae Graham. That's true. Yeah. And I think now now with Graham, we're asking a lot of Graham because you just said that Terry plays better with Graham on the court as well. Right. Yeah, so Graham is going to be logging starter minutes while coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. But I think I think what happens, I think you have to put Monk in that starting role, have Bacon coming off the bench well, and have him chewed up the So man. we saw we saw some of this last season mm-hmm. late in games where JB went to the Kimba Walker Tony Parker backcourt yeah. and it worked. How many times did we bail get did Tony Parker bail us out because there was somebody else to take the pressure off of Kemba? And everyone was like, I don't understand why he's running such a small backcourt. But it worked because you have two ball handlers in the backcourt, mm-hmm. cuts down on turnovers, and then, you Dude, know. create for others. Exactly. Yeah, so. so that's working. So that's why I would say 
it's not such a bad idea to start Devontae Graham, mainly because the Horn, one of the Hornets' biggest issues is we get off to these like bad early starts. So you let them get a little bit of chemistry going, and then you can be more competitive in the beginning, and then you bring Monk and Bacon in. However, so, having said that, I can tell Devontae, I'm not going to say he doesn't feel comfortable starting, but it takes him a while to get it. it yeah, get I noticed yeah, yeah, yeah. that he wasn't really that productive as a starter in the opening minutes yeah. of, of those games. And then once the game kind of came to him, then he just starts lighting it up. Yeah. See, like, with that with that being said, if, if we go Devontae as a starter, we need to get a reliable third point guard in this roster. Because I, I, I'm, I'm not sold on the other Martin brother uh, being a third point guard. Yeah, 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 not yeah, yeah. yet. He, has he even played maybe one or no, two games? No, 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 he's, he's played play one game? With I'm another. not sure if he's playing at all. Uh, but, uh, but I know he actually just got assigned to the uh, Swarm. To, yeah, to the Swarm. But uh, he's he's appeared in three games, but right. he's played like, he's averaging like eight minutes. So I'm guessing just garbage time. Garbage time. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I, so we, if, if we were to do that, we need to get a solid third point guard out. Yeah. It, 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 at least to, 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 to spell them some time of like eight, ten minutes a game to to, to, to actually lead the I don't I don't need you to score. Be a passer, play some defense and that's it. Agree. Okay. Uh so the Hornets next four games, Raps, Nets, Wiz, and the Bulls. Predictions, fellas. Two and two. I want to say three and one. I want to say three and one so bad. I want to say I want to say we're gonna lose to Toronto. That's what I'm saying. Then like, I want to say we will beat Brooklyn, Washington, okay. and Chicago. That's what I'm thinking. I've got a lot of faith that we can beat the Knicks. We can because, beat Brooklyn because, because Brooklyn's not that good. Actually, not as good as people expected. And I feel like we can Levert's out with we injury. can press them enough to steal that one. I think we 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 can beat the Wiz and Bulls. We'll definitely win one of those two games. See, see, I don't have enough confidence in this team that if we beat Brooklyn, that we're going to automatically beat Washington and Chicago because Bill is on fire right now. Yeah, Bill is on three, fire and, right it's, now. and it's three games in four days, too. It's three yeah. games in four days. I, so I'm, 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 I'm going two and two. I'm going to step out. I'm two and say, two is a safe bet. I'm going to say three and one. I'm going to step okay. out and say You know, three I'm going to roll with I hope you're right. I'm I'm right. I hope you're all right. <laughs> uh, if I'm one of these people, and I know the, the Hornets group is going to be like, dude, you're crazy. I think the Hornets are going to make the playoffs. Because I'm looking, okay, so if the playoffs were to start today, 13 games in, the Hornets are a six seed, okay? What's the difference in the Hornets Ooh. and, say, the Orlando, Orlando Magic? Or the Brooklyn Nets? Or the New York Knicks? Or the Detroit Pistons? See, or any of the other bad teams in the Eastern Conference? See, I, the Hornets aren't going to make the playoffs because they're good. They might make it just because the East, the East is trash. Bad, the East is I, I, I think the Magic have a trade to make. And I think Atlanta will be there once John Collins comes back. I don't, I, now, I, I, think, I think the the Hawks are on a good trajectory. But I don't even think they're really that much better than the Hornets, honestly. They've got Trey tra- tra- Young. I think, the Hawks got, I think the Hawks got one more year. They got one more year. I think I, this is the year. I, I, I can't see it this year. When, when John Collins comes back, Dude's averaging twenty and ten. So I think, I think this is year. I think the Hornets have a great problem in that they are six and seven with flaws. Yeah. And because you aren't at those flaws when you've already got, you know, you're essentially a five hundred team, you fix those flaws. And I'll give you the bottom half. Right now, Philly since at since at five, Andy sits at six, we're at seven, Brooklyn is at eight. Followed by Orlando, Cleveland, and then Atlanta. So does anyone think that really think that Cleveland, Cleveland, Orlando, or Atlanta is going to overtake the Hornets through yeah. the course of eighty-two games? I do. I, I do. don't know, man. It's hey, man. Man. If anybody it's out of those three would be Atlanta, Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or, 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 I'm telling you, Orlando is better than the record indicates. Well, overachieved last year. Thank you. Oh, okay, so uh, I, I, I don't. I don't believe in the in the NBA better than your record. You, there's a, you play enough games to where you are what your record says you are. And the, the only stat that matters is a W and an L. So I, I, it's just that the Hornets kind of have a, a bit of a cushion. They, they would have to go on a really, really bad losing streak. And yeah. I don't think the Horn, Hornets, I mean, they're going to lose a lot of games. They're probably going to yeah, lose yeah, yeah, yeah. 50, 45, 50. <laughs> 50 games probably. But, I, but the thing is, I don't see Cleveland – 
uh, or Orlando winning. And here's you know, the deal. 40 games, getting back so. to my earlier, getting back to my earlier stat, they have been down double digits each it, and yeah. every game this year. So, like Kaiser said, they're a 500 team right now with flaws. So imagine yeah. eliminating those flaws, and they may be. 10 to 3. Yeah, right I just, okay, the, what's today's date? November 7, <laughs> 7, 11, 17, 19. I'm going to write this in All right, Kaiser, book. Kaiser said. And uh, we're going to revisit this back in January. All right. Yes. And I, 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 I want to check the temperature of the room. Now, listen. <laughs> and, and now, I, I didn't want to do this until after this season was over. But I feel like this conversation kind of warrants the question I'm going to ask, okay? Before the season started, you know, I asked a question. I went and tagged everybody. <laughs> Does do the Hornets win more or less than twenty five games? We said no. We said no. Oh, three. We're wrong. We said we're wrong. No. We're wrong. We're wrong. I, I, I'm, I got to backtrack on that because I mean they're already six six wins. Yeah. I mean they could easily easily win nineteen more games. Yeah. So and, and like I was, I'm not I'm not calling y'all out. I'm just asking no, how are y'all yeah. feeling now? How are y'all? I mean, because I, I honestly didn't think. I mean, from what we were told from PJ Washington, it was G League, and, it, and, we were, and I didn't know Devontae was going to take this much of a jump. And so I'm like, also, I'll, I'll, I'll mean, roll yeah, it. I mean, plus a lot of things washed out that people didn't foresee. Like we, the, the balance of power shifted so hard to the Western Conference, and then nobody really foresaw the Raptors being as good as they were, or Siakam becoming an overnight superstar. You know, so there were a lot of. Things you know, the chips just falling in in our favor, and you know that that's a great thing. Um, so I'm gonna say they they win. <laughs> I'm gonna say 32 games, and I think that's a 33, just 33. enough. I think it's just enough to to if if they don't make the playoffs, they'll be right there in that really? race for the eight. Nah, 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 I'm thinking 37. I'm the, thinking 37. The 37, Hornets, 38. The Hornets. What, was it the Hornets that made the AC with thirty five wins? No, that was uh, uh, that was like it might have been like Detroit or somebody. Like yeah, that. I mean it's happened uh, multiple times. It's not happening. Happen. 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 No, I mean, welcome, welcome they, to they, this. They, 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 he says a solid six. Welcome to this side six. of eight mile though it, it, with it, the prediction as far it, as the games won. You're right. The East has a solid six, but it's them last two spots. I I, I mean you you're talking about Charlotte, Orlando, New York, uh, Atlanta. Pretty much in Cleveland, I, none of those teams are that much better than any of the other ones. So I think we're, we're going to see. You, you, you want to wait? Wait, you want to you want to you want to place a friendly wage on that? 30, Let's 30, do it. Let's do that. To get you in there. Let's do that. And I am dead. Well, well, we'll, we'll come, All right, we'll come over we'll 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 on the Facebook yeah, yeah, page. Yeah, okay. So uh, so props to Michael Jordan for uh, you know being a good owner and having some good young. Oh, we're not giving him credit. No, we're not. That, I, I, we're, we're, I don't know. We're, 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 too soon. Yeah, too soon. Yeah, 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 too yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, too yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan has absolutely nothing to do with the PJ Washington pick. <laughs> he has nothing to do with bringing in. Like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. All no, right, yeah. All right. 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 So let's go pay some bills. Our sponsor, Anchor.fm, will be right back. And we are back. Hey. And as I said at the beginning of the show, <laughs> sometimes it's a terrible thing clank, clank, to be clank, right. Clank, 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 and those of you that clank, listen and watch clank, under construction, <laughs> we've been saying for weeks now that Kyle Allen <laughs> is, <laughs> is not a good <laughs> NFL quarterback. Now, before we get into this segment, he's a decent. Backup. I feel like oh, yeah, I feel like I need to put this caveat out there for everybody listening. Here at under construction, we do not want to see the Carolina Panthers fail. Absolutely, Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yep. Here at under construction, we do not want to see Cal Allen fail. fail. Nope. Nope. Yep. However, comma. Cal Allen is who we thought he, he was. was. <laughs> he is who we thought he was. Now, and, and, and shout out to the people who, in other Facebook groups and, and online, has been telling us, you don't know what you're talking about. Y'all are 5 4, 5 and 1 with God. No. The defense of Christian McCaffrey. We've been telling you this. Now you finally see Cal it. Allen is who we thought he was. Yeah, he's. At best, a game manager. He's and a game at worst, game. he's what he's we tricked, saw today. He's tricked them for life. So, <laughs> and, you know, and a lot of people after the San Francisco game said, well, hey, it's San Francisco, which is fair enough. Number fair, one fair, defense fair. in the league. But, dog, the Atlanta Falcons, 
the two and seven Atlanta Falcons, hey man, they look, came into our house and they made Kyle hey, Allen look like me. Hey, silver lining, he threw for three hundred yards today. Sure Would have thrown for four <laughs> if he didn't throw four picks to the other the team. team. Yeah. So I mean, look right now, this 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 this, hurts, this, hurts. this <laughs> man is now sitting at seven fumbles with five of them lost, nine interceptions for a total of sixteen turnovers versus. 10 touchdowns Yikes. in eight games played. This wow. is the guy who we are arguing about replacing Cam Newton. No. After, after the last two weeks, if I'm Cam Newton, I'm walking in the office asking for a new contract. <laughs> I'm asking for a new contract like, or an extension because, like, and, and and here's the deal about Cam. One, let me let me give major shout outs to Cam Newton because we all know that Cam Newton can't walk ten yards without there being some sort of headline. Mm-hmm. Everything that this man has done in the wake of this push narrative of a quarterback controversy has been completely a one. He yeah. has he has said all the right things. He has done all the right things. He has been there in support of Cal Allen. And with the way that these last two weeks have gone, he is 1,000% vindicated in whatever the heck he wants to do. Yeah. And and one thing I have never liked about Ron Rivera is he always avoids certain questions and certain yeah. conversations. We can go and talk about today's game for the next 30 or 45 minutes. And he's there talking and he's missed opportunity and all that good stuff. And as soon as you mention Cam Newton and 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 mm-hmm. possibly getting out of here, he shuts up. Who treats their star quarterback like that? Wrong who le- who leaves that 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 that, that, that cliffhanger out mm-hmm. there that the that the organization might actually be thinking about getting rid of Cam Newton? After the last two weeks, if I am Cam Newton and walking into that office with the most flamboyant of outfits that I could find, <laughs> and I am asking for a contract extension. Come with a house coat and some glasses on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the grandma house coat. No, I, I agree with you there. You wouldn't see this in Green Bay or even, let's take a look at the Patriots. The Patriots multiple times have had guys who the media said could possibly usurp Tom Brady. We saw Matt Castle. Uh, Matt Castle. We saw Garoppolo, Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo. And uh, Jacoby Brissett. And every time, yeah, they're gone. Tom Brady's our guy. Tom Brady is our guy. Whenever the question was proposed to Belichick, he's just kind of like, are y'all, are y'all serious? Are y'all are really serious? Dumb? So, But we don't see it. We didn't see that with the Panthers. It was just kind of like, well, we don't want to talk about that because that's a distraction. Kyle Allen is our guy for now, and we'll talk about that later. Well, Drew Brees, oh, sorry. No, I was, I was going to say. Drew Brees has two losses on this season with him being a starting quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater has zero losses. Last week in the Saints loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, statistically speaking, was Drew Brees' worst, worst, worst game. game of his NFL career. And not one time did you hear any peep of possibly getting Teddy Bridgewater back in there. We are going with Drew Brees. He is our quarterback. He has earned that right. And for the life of me, I can't understand. I would never understand why does Cam Newton not get that exact same respect. Oh, we know why. We know why. I'm trying to start any controversies today. Uh, hey, come on. As far as, as <laughs> but get into the game though. Get into the game today. As far as the game, I think. Once we officially are eliminated out of the playoffs, I think today's game has to be the game that gets Ron Rivera out of Carolina. Honestly, I, I don't. Th- I don't think he's gonna be fired. He probably won't, but it has be fired, to be. I, well, I, I don't think. So. I think. I think you could blame him more for the Tampa game, games that we should have won, or games that we had. You know, that we were in it and competitive, and then we didn't win because of a poor coaching decision. Kind of like the, the Tampa game. I mean, well, I mean has, has he ever had those Dan Quinn? We, we've had three yeah. of those games this year because it, the the uh, the Rams game because we we played them to a field goal. It was the Rams game, the Bucks game, and it was last week's game when we played last week. I, I don't know if any uh, of the, I, the the Tampa game and, is. And I'm, I'm talking about like goal line situation. Gotcha. Like yeah, the, short the Tampa situation. game is really the only one where I'm like that was a bad bad coaching decision. Yeah. Him and North Turner outsmarted themselves like coaches tend to do. 
and ended up got cute. And yeah, they got cute and they ended up losing. It's not necessarily, not necessarily, Ron Rivera's fault that Kyle Allen experiment failed. So it, it's falling apart. If, if anything, though, I don't know how David Tepper will look at this, but you may want to credit him for for the team getting to this point. This point without one of the best quarterbacks in the league due to the strength of the defense as a whole. Not not the run defense, but as a whole, the, the Panthers defense was pretty good. And even today they weren't bad. It was just yeah, that yeah, yeah. we kept giving the land of the ball no, and, 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 and there was yeah. only, there was only so much they could do. So quick question for you. If we were to let go Ron, what type of coach would you want in in, in Charlotte? Offense. Uh, somebody who's going to air it out, an offensive coach. You have to look. Really? Yeah, it has to. Like, Cam Newton can still throw the ball. He can still throw the but ball. Do you honestly think a, coach, a new coach that wants an offensive system is going to want a Cam Newton back? Or do, do, or do you think so? Do you can think I is- introduce to you the Baltimore Ravens? Yeah, but that's, well, that's, well hold, on, Jackson, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. They held on to Joe Flacco until they just couldn't anymore. Yeah, agree, agree. So I think Harbaugh is just playing the hand that he was dealt. If, if I yeah. think he would have taken the Flacco that won in the Super Bowl over Lamar Jackson would have. any day if, if that Flacco still existed. And they probably held on to Joe Flacco a little too long. So having said that, we talked about this a little bit off camera, but – I don't think that coaches like coaching a guy like him. No, they, they don't. don't. They, it, he's you. You have to essentially create your offense around him and his ability, and that's tough for for a head coach to do. Offensive coordinators love it. I think. I think a guy like Chud. I think he was salivating when he found out the Panthers were drafting Cam Newton. Um, why? Why? Why would Ron make a decision once Chud went to Cleveland? to go to a, such a conservative type of offensive coordinator and Mike Shula and, 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 and let that ineptness, inept, ineptitude, whatever you want to call it, the big word, why would he let that go on for so long? It, 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 to, to me, honestly, you wasted pieces of that dude's prime. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and we're doing that now with, with, with Christian, Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey right now. Getting back to your point about coaches not liking – the quarterback Susan style of getting Lamar Jeff Fisher. and <laughs> Cam Newton. I completely agree with you that the coaches and the offensive coordinators today still don't like those type of players. But they are very begrudgingly starting to accept. Yeah, no, you're those right. Players. Yeah, they and, have to. And I think what's happened is so many of these types of quarterbacks have come out, they're coming out of college, that it's unavoidable. You're you have to accept them. And then when you go and you look at the league and you look at a Kyle Murray, you look at a Dwayne Haskins, who looks like he is finally going to get a chance in Washington. <sighs> you look at a Lamar Jackson. You look at Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, Pat Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Kobe yeah, Brazil, yeah. Teddy Bridgewater, uh, James Winston. And, and even though they've all had varying levels of uh, success, the landscape is changing. So I think, and, and, and to another degree, I think Cam Newton, the argument can be made that Cam Newton was a sacrificial lamb. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if Carolina was to go and get another head coach and offensive coordinator, and if they chose to stay with the old guard to go get a, a prototypical pocket pass and QB, it's almost like you're, you're, you're trying to stay in the old ways. It's almost like the NFL as a whole is progressing forward, you but you're, you're, you're trying to... Here's, here's the one problem, though. The NFL, more than any other professional sport, is a copycat league. Yeah. And who's winning Super Bowls? It's not any of those guys I'll we, give you, you we that. just listed. Yeah, I'm not saying that those guys don't have the ability. The problem is that Tom Brady it's is, the is about 500 years old, and he's still winning Super Bowls throwing three-yard slant routes, you know? I mean, it's 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 so coaches look at that, and they're like, okay, do I want to try and build a system like Belichick has built or even Sean Payton? But, 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 no. but, but see, coaches need to ask and, and, be, and be real with themselves, am I Belichick? At the same time, though, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning and Tom Brady's, and, and I guess you can almost throw Russell Wilson in there. 
they won these Super Bowls. They are winning these Super Bowls because coaches and teams have yet to fully excel these quarterbacks we're talking about. Right, yeah. The Baltimore Ravens are probably the first team to openly admit that, hey, we are fully embracing the type of quarterback that we have. So now that we have a team who is – and I think Arizona has accepted who Kyler Murray is, and I think they're trying to cater their offense to him. So I would say let's give it a couple of years of watching these teams fully embrace these players before we can say that it doesn't work. But I think that – Let me ask you a question. Would you say that the Falcons – when they had Vic, did they fully accept them? No. 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 I don't think so? No. I mean, they were they were. They were he, he had a lot of free when reign. You look, he had a lot of free reign, man. When you look at all of, a lot of Vic's highlights and you look at him running, they weren't called runs. They were scrambles. He was, he, he was scrambling to get out of the pocket. Yeah, I agree. I, I, but I think that's because, and this is ultimately the crux of the situation when it comes to quarterbacks like Cam, injuries. Yeah. Cam Cam has – is. I mean, we're finally starting to see – on the back end, all the punishment build up. But not every one of those guys, in fact, none of those guys built are like built him. like him. Yeah. And then you take a guy like like RG3, who I think the Washington Redskins were like, okay, we're, we're, we're going to ride this guy. Yeah. And then they, they rolled him. <laughs> they rolled him. <laughs> they rolled him right out of the So I, I think that's always in the back of coaches' heads. Like, okay, so I got this guy who can run all around the field and make these dynamic plays. But at some point, you've seen him with Mahomes yeah. this year. At some point, you know, something's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to take the wrong hit. Or he's going to take too many hits. And we've seen uh, the NFL love to protect quarterbacks. And it's almost impossible to to protect quarterbacks like that. So, yeah. I don't know. It, it, you know, if I'm a very left, uh, it's hard to say what kind of coach I'm going to depend Yeah, on. yeah. Well, hopefully we get to find out here. No, nope. so, <laughs> well, we will see. Hopefully we do. Speaking uh, of protecting quarterbacks, woo! so Colin Kaepernick had a workout uh, at a high school in Atlanta yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it was a long, drawn-out saga in which him and the NFL could not come, agree to terms on the terms of the workout, whether or not media would be there. So Kaepernick and his team ended up um, having their own uh, workout in which six teams showed up, although 24 teams were interested in the workout. The six ultimately showed up. It's a Saturday, uh, and most teams are preparing for, for Sunday. Um, the Carolina Panthers did not send a representative Saturday. Nor, nor Turner stated that he wanted to prepare for Sunday. Sunday's game. Eric Reed <laughs> did, did travel <laughs> to support his friend Colin. Uh, your thoughts on the situation, and should should David Tepper have sent someone down there just to take a look? Yes. Uh, well, this week he realized he should have sent somebody down there today. Uh, yeah. Uh, he should have signed him yesterday to yeah, play it today. Was, nah, it, was, it was terrible, <laughs> but uh, th this whole situation is to me is is, is bull for the NFL stats. You set up a you set up a, a workout on a Saturday. A Saturday, not 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 a Tuesday, not a Monday, but a Saturday. And Tuesday is the day that they normally, normally right, do this. Work out. It's the normal day when they do it. So, um, me personally, I can't say yes or no, definitively speaking, whether or not the Panthers should have sent the rep because I I never would have expected them to do so. They already have Eric Reed. Right. They already have Trey Boston, and even though. Trey Boston is an activist. He's not the activist that, that Kaepernick and that Reed is. But, you know, Trey Boston, his activism has actually has actually gotten in the way of his career as well. Um, again, could you imagine going into the season with the Cam Newton, <clears throat> replacing him with Cal Allen, having the firestorm that we have had for the last two months, and then bringing in Colin Kaepernick? <laughs> Could y'all you man? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, Team and, sales, man. Now and 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 in the preseason, we actually talked about possibly bringing Kaepernick in as a backup. My reason for not wanting Carolina to do so is completely different from any of these other teams. And I feel like if Carolina would have ever bring in Colin Kaepernick, even though after today I'm probably going to hop on the bandwagon that they should. Um, 
I feel like the Panthers will be made the scapegoat of the NFL. Mm. And I mean that, I say that because Trey Boston, when he uh, when he finished up with Arizona, he stayed on the uh, wire for a very long time, considering he is one of the uh, top safety in the league. Same with Eric Reed. He stayed as a, he stayed on the open for market year, for right? um, yeah, no, not like no, uh, uh-uh. couple months. He it was a couple months. It was like two or three months, and he's a former All Pro safety. Um, I feel like with David Tepper bringing them and bringing them both in, it absolves the other owners right from east. from doing some stuff like that as well. So if Colin if Colin Kaepernick comes to Carolina. Everyone's going to tell us to shut the hell up because Kaepernick has a job now. Um, there's no collusion, all of that bull crap. But what? Oh my, my bad. Let me let me finish. But what would have happened is the new guy on the block, who is David Tepper, would have been the one to take to accept all of that heat and all that frustration from everybody mm-hmm. would bring a Colin Kaepernick in when the old guard, all of those other owners were basically able to get what they wanted, and that was to ultimately not sign Colin Kaepernick. So, let me ask you an opinion. Let me ask you a question. So, does the NFL hosting this workout prove that there is collusion? Think about it. Think about it because it's kind of like you're getting permission to work it, to work them out. Like, well, it's, it's like unwritten, like, hey, uh, so if, if you really were interested in him, you'd have bought him in months ago. Even years ago. But the NFL wasn't. This was, it's important to note that this was at the request of Colin Kaepernick and his team. And no, 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 no. No, 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 okay. so it wasn't, no Colin it wasn't. Kaepernick was on the island somewhere eating Twinkies. So, and his well, grandpa but, said, hey, we got a call. So to that point, if the NFL calls you and say, hey, we want you to do a public workout for whatever the ulterior motive might be, but then you start adding concessions. That is, and I think that's part of it. I don't agree with what Stephen Smith, Stephen A. Smith, said. I think that's just the, the worst <laughs> take on this whole thing. Yeah, but, but I, I got another take. But, guys. but I don't. I'm not expecting the NFL to be buddy buddy with Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, they have a pending lawsuit. Yeah, they probably they they feel like there's no collusion, although we. No, know there that is. there probably is maybe not at the NFL level, but between a lot of these the teams, a lot of these owners, absolutely. So, you know, they're like, "Hey, we want you to come work out," and then Colin Kaepernick says, "Okay, we'll come work out, but I gotta have my media team there, and I gotta that." And the NFL says, "No, you do it on our terms." And then Colin Kaepernick says, "Well, no, we gotta agree to different terms," and then he ends up leaving and then having his his own workout. I don't think I think the NFL tried to do a publicity stunt and went horribly wrong. Mm-hmm. They they said, okay, you know what? We can get some goodwill by at least giving Kaepernick a workout because mm-hmm. if we give him a workout, then that weakens the, the collusion case, which is true. But then once Colin Kaepernick said, and Colin Kaepernick probably felt that way, you know what? They're just trying to use this as an opportunity to weaken my case. So I'm going to give it back to mm-hmm. them. And then there's a lot of back. And, 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 and then also... One of his biggest beef was there's no media involved, and only the NFL has the tape of this, and so the NFL can effectively control that narrative. Absolutely, he was just okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And I and I I don't believe that. Well, for one, um, I don't think this proves or disproves that there was collusion in the NFL. Like you guys said, I think this is just a PR stuff because yeah. they 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 told him on they informed him on Tuesday that we're setting up a workout for you this Saturday, so you got five days. And we're gonna we're not gonna tell you which receivers we're gonna use. So so effectively he could have showed up and you've been one of the receivers. And mm-hmm. when and when you guys aren't able to sync up, now they're able to use that footage to like mm-hmm. control the narrative that you can't play. And so I don't believe that Kaepernick tried to one up them with the whole uh, media thing. But if you walk into there and it's like a closed circuit workout type thing, like you say, Rodney, they can control the narrative. the narrative. I think Kaepernick should have said, you know what, no, I'm going to hold my own private workout. Because if he says no and then continues doing whatever he's doing, the NFL is going to say, aha, uh-huh, you don't want to play. We offered you a workout and you didn't take yes. it. And then and then Kaepernick's team has to come out and start explaining He details. almost had – he. He had to take the workout because if he chose not to take the workout, even even not the media, just regular fans, because right. we see what he can say, everyone would have been like. Well, he could. I think he could have said, 
you know what? I'm going to decline and hold my own workout because then he he can control that out he can control the narrative. Hey, the NFL wanted to, wanted to me to do a workout, but they had these concessions that I wasn't comfortable with. So we're going to have our own private workout, which is what ultimately ended up happening. It's just that it took a mess it's, to get yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, but, so so I I, I so. I want your opinion on this. A famous sports commentator on Fox Sports <laughs> uh, commented on Stephen A. Smith's video. I told y'all Kaepernick is a fraud. Y'all need to separate the cause from these shenanigans and untangle your hopes from the walking scammer. Do the PSA. Do, do did the PSA before the damn workout. What a joke. Marcellus Wally, how do you feel? Marcellus Wally said that. I mean, uh, he's all, that he's always saying some clown shit lately. Oh, oh man, he tweeted that to the listeners. He but. tweeted that. Oh man, the uh, the shit locker thing. I, I thought shit lock said it. So that <laughs> yeah, um, was great because no, I was, Whitlock actually was like, this doesn't make any sense. Oh, this, on the ta- like I actually agreed with. Well, Whitlock. I actually saw him attack. Um, Attack Kaepernick in the wake of his because because Kaepernick did like a little ninety second spill afterwards and I actually saw him attack him but um I it it doesn't matter what Kaepernick does he will be villainized for it and here's my deal I want to throw some questions out there so the NFL puts this together and there are twenty four teams that, that well we'll say twenty four teams in the interested because that's how many reps reportedly showed up so what happened. From Tuesday of last week until yesterday, that we now have 24 teams that are interested in Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick is an unrestricted free agent. It means he can talk to anybody, anybody yeah. anywhere, it, it, anytime. It, it goes back to my question. It proves collusion. It, basically, the NFL said, hey, it's okay for you guys to look at Colin Kaepernick now officially. It, 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 the NFL ultimately gave them... Well, permission the, to me. Team, uh, uh, the reports were that teams were contacting the NFL asking for permission because they were uncertain if it, if it would affect the lawsuit. Um, and the NFL was like, "Yeah, he, he's an unrestricted free agent. You know, and, uh, he doesn't need a public workout. A team, if a, and then this is another thing, if the team was really interested in Colin Kaepernick, they just call him and have him come work out. I, I, I kind of, this all behind the I door. think the NFL said to all the teams, look. I no, I think they said we highly recommend that you guys go to this workout, this official sanctioned NFL workout, because then that weakens Colin Kaepernick's case. They can say, "Look, twenty-four teams were interested in him. Well, How could they be colluding?" Here's what I believe. Him to play? Here's what I believe because this just came up out of the blue. This came right, out of nowhere. Yeah. What I believe, I believe that there is a team that is truly, truly interested. And that is very close to reaching out to Colin Kaepernick, and I believe that it it, it it it's pretty bound to happen. The NFL said, "Whoa, how can we spend this for some good PR?" No, absolutely. No, 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 no. I so, actually, there was a, a report. I was trying to. I saw it in a sports group on Facebook, and I was trying to verify, it and it was iffy. But there was a report that the New York Jets had made a commitment to him before the public workout. Mm-hmm. Um, that after his public workout, he would do a private workout uh, with them. So I like that theory that and, the and, NFL and I haven't even read that, but this I just believe that there's a team that is pretty close to signing Colin Kaepernick, and so the NFL said, "Well, hey, let's, let's do this. this. Let's do this, mm-hmm. so that when he gets signed in a week, week and a half, it looks Absolutely. like it came, it came from." And here. I think, I mean, we were saying this off camera. I think that. There are three different types of franchises when it comes uh-huh. to, to the yeah. situation. There are franchises that absolutely do not want to sign Colin Kaepernick because of his political beliefs and activism. You got the Dolphins, the the Forty Niners, uh, obviously, of course, uh, the Giants, probably and the, the Broncos, Steelers. The, yeah. yeah, and Dolphins, then yeah. then you have teams like say the Panthers. Who would absolutely sign Colin Kaepernick, but they don't really have a need for yeah, him. Yeah. I mean, the Panthers didn't before today, but <laughs> uh, but you don't really have a need for him. And Colin Kaepernick has always maintained that he's a starter and mm-hmm. he wants to start and he wants to make starter money. So I think there are a lot of teams: the Green Bay, the Patriots, the Seahawks. You know, the Seahawks even talked to Colin Kaepernick at one time, but you're really going to pay him 13 million dollars a year to back up Russell Wilson. So you got those guys, and then you got those guys in the middle. The guys who, the, the teams that 